I want to take you on a journey through the auditory nervous system with a specific focus on tinnitus. So you all know about the cochlea, this extraordinary piece of apparatus shaped in the shell that transfers physical sound, the vibrations that get transferred into fluid movements, moving the little hair cells that get triggered into neuronal impulses that go all the way to the auditory cortex, which helps us perceive sound. This moves through, all these impulses are transferred to the, the cochlear nucleus via the cochlear nerve. And in this cochlear nucleus, you perceive the rhythm, the frequency of sound, the intensity, the loudness, and a, there's a startle reflex, a very, very primitive ref, reflex can be activated in this, this area of the, of the brain. And then from there it moves into the olivary complex, which is a little bit more sophisticated, regulating timing, just noticing more intricate details of sound. And then the inferior colliculus, which is where you get a sense of sound is coming from. So you hear something, oh, where's that? And it's very closely linked into the visual map of the world we have. We can locate sound as if we have this map inside our minds. This happens in the inferior colliculus. And from there it gets transferred into the geniculate body of the thalamus. The thalamus is a sensory relay station takes all the senses, the sensory input, and helps us make sense of the world around us. And here, when sound comes into this area, we get ready to react to it. We get ready to move. And from there, from the salamus area, it gets trans um, transferred to the auditory cortex, which is where we recognize sound. Ah, oh, Mozart. Hmm, Stan Getz. <laughs> and we can hear the meaning of sound, we can remember sounds, we can hear the, the sound of the sea and remember uh, childhood things or voices, remind us of certain situations we've been in. And from the auditory cortex, this gets relayed into the specialized areas of recognition and the Brodmann's area is where we recognize speech. But there are many different pathways through the central nervous system and particularly interesting for tinnitus. When the information reaches the cochlear nuclei, it can get transferred to the reticular activating system. Now this is fascinating. This is the part of the brainstem that filters out all the irrelevant information. We just get the important stuff. So, we need this to function in the world because we can't possibly be aware of all the billions of things happening at once, otherwise we have to lie down all our days and be completely overwhelmed with just being alive. The reticular activating system filters out the vast majority of the experience and we only notice what's necessary. This area filters the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the senses. And so it's a crucial area for working with awareness, what we can manage, how we can function, depending on what we know and what we sense. <clears throat> it really is fascinating if you look at this area because it validates our beliefs. This is a part of the nervous system that the way we think we are and how we behave, for example, if I think I'm bad at public speaking, I'll be nervous and in a way my mind and my body will, will kind of validate that, it'll help that manifest. It'll help me be afraid, I may make lots of mistakes and in a way my mindset will, will help manifest this in the world. So with tinnitus, if you think tinnitus will get better, it's probably going to have a huge impact on how you regulate sound. 
because the reticular activating system will filter out unnecessary sound when you feel safe, calm and relaxed. But you probably experience this yourself. If you go online and read negative information about tinnitus, then it can trigger a fear response and your tinnitus can get a lot worse. But if you really understand how tinnitus works and you know that it's a temporary stress response and you know that you can get better, you can learn from people like me or to listen to other people who used to have it, or just knowing the fact that 20% of the population get tinnitus from time to time, but the vast majority move on, it's just 1.6%, under 2% of people for whom it becomes an ongoing condition that can irritate them and cause problems. So just that fact alone, knowing that we can all move on and let go of tinnitus, that's what normally happens, or really understanding how it works and therefore believing tinnitus can get better, if you really get a, 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 an embodied sense of this, if you really digest this and process this and come to terms with the fact that tinnitus is just a, a temporary stress response, actually your threat levels come down and your reticular activating system is much more likely to validate this behavior and start filtering out the background information. So this is a crucial part of central nervous system considering tinnitus in the brain stem. It links directly into the thalamus. As I said before, it's a sensory relay station. It relays all the movement, body information and the sensors to the cerebral cortex so that we can make sense of the world and know how to react and from the thalamus it goes into the limbic system which is where we start to get our emotional responses anger fear sexual interest uh, boredom all these kind of mammalian responses uh, that we share with dogs and cats um, the the limbic system can really this is the place where we really get it, we really react emotionally and we can go into behaviours of fear, anxiety, arousal and that has a huge impact on the senses. So the fight or flight response <gasps> can get triggered and our senses go bananas, there's a lion out there, we need to see it, smell it, hear it and so everything gets hyper vigilant, hyper alert because it could save our life. And equally, when we're out having supper with friends, having a good laugh, feeling very comfortable, eating, which is very safe, we feel so safe and connected and in touch that actually the alarm bells can stop ringing, our senses can quieten down. Um, many people often say, Julian, why is it that I was out having supper with friends last week and my tinnitus went quiet? This is the reason. We're very safe and we settle and the alarm bells stop ringing. So the limbic system's linked into the nucleus accumbens, which is another really interesting area with tinnitus. This nucleus rewards life-affirming behaviors with pleasure. So making love, that feels nice, people like it. And, and so there's serotonin and dopamine that gets secreted in the body as a way of making sure that we will procreate. It's like we are rewarded with life-affirming behaviours. Or eating food, having a laugh, going for a walk on a lovely day, singing, humming. Um, all these kinds of behaviours really get us to calm down and settle. And the pleasure that we get ensures that we keep these behaviours going. The nucleus accumbens also has an inhibiting effect. It switches off hypervigilance as well. So its pleasure can literally cause the alarm bells to stop ringing. Or to put a negative spin on that, if we feel terrified or fearful or miserable or depressed or overwhelmed, 
our serotonin dopamine levels come right down, we feel dreadful and alarm bells can start ringing. So it's, it's very important that if you look at the central nervous system, you can see how positive behaviors are very, very good for the senses and help them settle. So doing yoga, practicing Tai Chi, making love, having a long hot bath, being with really safe, respectful people, this causes our senses to stop being hypervigilant and to settle. And our awareness comes back into the body and we can just switch off and ignore most of the background stimulation. When we're calm, safe and relaxed, we can really switch on our attention and then switch it off again and we can really experience a calm, peaceful state of mind and body. So looking at the auditory nervous system, it's interesting how fear and anxiety play such an important part. And you can see that the rewarding benefits of calming, enjoyable activities can cause the alarm bells to stop ringing.